Welcome back everyone. Today we will be doing intro to Pawn Tools. So this is a room from Try Hack Me and it's about binary exploitation. So what is binary exploitation by the way? So binary exploitation is when there is a vulnerability in an executable file and then you exploit that vulnerability for your interests. So in this room we will be using Pawn Tools framework. Pawn Tools is actually a framework and you can find it in this page. You can install the framework on your computer and use it. So basically, these are the installation instructions. And here, how to use it, by the way, you can use it by um, just importing the framework in the Python code. So basically, instead of going about um, using Metasploits and other tools to exploit a buffer overflow, you can just use Pawn Tools, and Pawn Tools contains all of the tools that you would need for buffer overflow exploitation. Also, you may need Pawn Debug. So, Pawn Debug is an extension that can be added to GDB Debugger. And these are the installation instructions. Once it is installed, you will find it attached to GDB. So, basically, let's start with task 2 and 3. So task 2 is about checksec and task 3 is about cyclic. Checksec is actually a tool to check on the binary protections on uh, the binary protections that exist on the said executable file. So we use checksec to check if the current binary has uh, existing protections against buffer overflow. And then we will be use cyclic. So cyclic is kind of a tool, a uh, part of pawn tools all right that can be used in a python code to generate patterns and perform binary exploitation such as buffer overflow so let's go to my machine and just take this here all right the first thing you would do is to log in the password is buzz the same and you will be logged in so once you're logged in Let's check, let's check the directories here. So we have two directories, pawn debug and intro to pawn tools. So pawn intro to pawn tools contains the challenges. So and pawn debug, as we as we spoke earlier, it is the plugin for uh, GTB debugger. We will need both later in the challenge. So let's see the into intro to pawn tools. See the intro to pawn tools. Okay, so we have four directories: checksec, cyclic, networking, shellcraft. So we will be in this video. We will be checking checksec and cyclic, and in the next video we will be going over networking and shellcraft. So let's go to checksec. So we have two executable files, and we have one C code. So, we will use checksec to check the protections implemented on both binaries. So, if we type checksec, enter to pawn tools, So let's go over the findings. So R E L R O R E L R O stands for relocation read only. So it's a protection set on binaries to prevent buffer overflow. You can read more about that. Uh, I will put the resources in the comments. Also stack. The stack canaries are kind of tokens placed after a stack to detect a stack overflow. And we have NX and we have PIE. So all the protections as you can see are found in the tool in the binary intro to pawn one let's do that to the next binary the next one has partial uh, relocation read only doesn't have stack canaries nx is disabled and the position independent executable is absent and also has RWX segments. So none of the protections used to prevent buffer overflows are existent on the intro to pawn two. 
which, may, which makes this binary the vulnerable one to buffer overflow. So as you can see, checksec can be used to check for vulnerabilities in binaries. It doesn't, it, it's, it's not used to, or it's not used for the exploitation. So basically you can use checksec before the exploitation part. Now let's go over the questions and answer them. So does intro to pawn one have full relocation uh, read only or not? So intro to pawn one, yes. So we answer with yes. Does intro to pawn one have RWX segments? Nope, it doesn't have. Does intro to pawn two have a stack canary? Intro to pawn two stack canary. There is no stack canaries, so stack overflow is possible against this binary. So we type no. Does intro to pawn two not have PIE? So let's see intro to pawn two. Yes, it doesn't have. So we answer with no. Oh, not. So we answer with yes. It's the other way around. Cause a buffer overflow on intro to pawn one by inputting a long string such as what was detected. Okay. So here we go. Now what we will do, we will attack the intro to pawn two since it is the vulnerable uh, binary here. So actually let's do let's let's do the attack on both. So let's type echo and let me copy the characters. So this is called the pattern actually. The pattern is used to cause a segmentation fault. When a segmentation fault is found, it means that the binary is vulnerable to buffer overflow. So let's try it on intro to on one. So stack smashing detected. Let's do the same for intro to point two. Segmentation fault. So a segmentation fault happened on the second binary, which is actually a natural result. Uh, we, we expect this to happen since um, the binary doesn't have protections on the stack, on AX, or neither of these protections. So let's see the answers, or let's see the questions. What was detected against intro to pawn 1? So if you check intro to pawn 1, we have stack smashing detected. And finally, now cause a buffer overflow intro, on intro 2.2. What error do you get? Of course, we get segmentation fault. All right, so we're done with the checking part. Now we go to the exploitation part. Let's understand cyclic. So if we see the out of this. So the next thing is cyclic. Basically, cyclic is a tool among other tools in Pawn Tools framework. And basically, you can use cyclic within any Python code that you are developing to exploit a buffer overflow vulnerability. So let's go now to the machine and understand this process. So basically here, in this task, we have a couple of questions to answer. Um, so I will be answering the questions, explaining the answers, and then uh, we will dissect this with more details. So basically, here is the directory of cyclic. If you list the files or the content, you have alphabet, flag, intro 2.3, test cyclic.c. So right now, let's cat the content of alphabet. So this is kind of pattern, right? Now, what's that for? Before doing that, we knew that checksec is used to um, find out if a current binary has protections against buffer overflow. So let's run check sec on intro to pawn. Um, yeah, it's able to complete sometimes, doesn't work. 
So what do we have now? We have a couple of protections missing. We have a stack, no canaries found, and also we have no PIE. Although NX enabled, the binary is still um, exploitable, so we can actually perform buffer overflow on that. Now the, the objective of the alphabet here is an example of a pattern that we can use to overflow the application. So how can we do that? Before doing that, let's open testcycle.c and study the code a bit. So cat test. This is the code, all right, of the vulnerable application. Now, if you go over the code quickly here, we have the main function that prints out I am I run as Dismas printf who are you and then it invokes the start function. If you go to start function, we have a definition for a variable uh, which has 24 bytes allocated and then we have the gets function that retrieves the input from the user which is you so you input your name and the name gets stored in the name variable and then it, got, it gets printed out now you may be wondering why the print flag has not been invoked here so the print flag is the function that is responsible for printing out the flag all right so why do we have a separate code for printing out a text file simply because we cannot actually print out the file ourselves. permission denied so the current user which is buzz doesn't have permissions over the flag the only user who has permissions over flag is dismiss who happens to be the same owner of intro to owner of the binary here and we see that the binary has the suit bit which means that if you run the binary it will run as dismiss which is great news but still again we cannot print out the flag since the function doesn't call the flag doesn't call the print flag function so and we know beforehand that intro 2.3 is vulnerable to buffer overflow so how can we use buffer overflow exploitation right to redirect the execution from start into print flag we want this uh, binary to print the flag or to use this function so to do that we have to perform buffer overflow so we will have to go through the same or the exact methodology of conducting a buffer overflow attack so the first thing we would do is to generate a um, what do we call it pattern right now before we generate a pattern there are a couple of questions that need to be answered so the first thing which user owns both the flag and intro and the file it is dismiss use check sec on intro uh, what bird theme protection is missing it is canary if you go back to my or if you run check sec again you see the canaries are missing uh no this is the uh, this is the page of bundle i don't need that okay back to here what ascii letter sequence is so all right now let's see how i got this answer so we know beforehand in order to perform buffer overflow you need a pattern right now the author has prepared you a pattern here and the pattern is stored in the alphabet file now in order to use that pattern to overflow the binary we will have to use gtp so run gtp against the binary and now we direct the contents of the alphabet into the application we do that by using r and then we have a row to the left and then we write the the name of the file that contains the pattern so we have we got segmentation fault and if you look at the eip the instruction pointer we see it has been overwritten with four j's okay and the address is this one which means that this is the address all right the address of the instruction pointer at which we have performed a segmentation fault so this is the first part of a buffer overflow exploitation all right first we have to understand at which address or what is the address what is the address uh, at which the exploitation are the uh, uh, I don't know what to say <laughs> uh, the uh, exploitation yeah actually when you're sick you cannot just say words so basically you have to find out the address at which the characters of my life the key so 
In buffer overflow, we have to find out the address or the instruction pointer address where the overflow, overflow has occurred. So this is the instruction pointer or the address where the overflow has occurred. And the overflow has occurred with 4Js. The next thing is to just overwrite or replace 4Js with your own code. It could be reverse shell, it could be calculator. In our case, we want to print out the flag, all right? To print out the flag, we have to find out the address of the uh, print flag function. To find that out, just use print ampersand print flag. This is the address of the print flag. So in our case, what we need to do, we need to, in, instead of 4Js, we want the instruction pointer to be overflowed with the address of the print flag. All right, okay. Now, the next step. So the answer is here, what ASCII letter sequence is? 4Js. What is the output of cyclic 12? Simply type, let me exit here, quit. Cyclic 12. So cyclic 12 is actually uh, generating a pattern with 12 characters. So you can use that pattern to crash an application. That's the answer for this question. And now what pattern in hex was the IP overflowed? Okay. Now let's get to that. So exit. Okay, we did, did that. Now we take a note of the print flag address and now we create a Python code that will exploit the binary. So nano exp.py. So in here, the first thing we do is to import the tools or the pawn tools using from pwn import all the tools, okay? Or actually, I missed one step. So let me exit. So we have now to generate a pattern of our own. Other than the alphabet, we will have to generate a pattern using cyclic. So use cyclic. Generate a pattern of 100. So 100 is actually an arbitrary number. You can just try on your own different numbers. There is no specific reason for 100. You can try whatever you want. So cyclic 100. And this is the pattern that we will use. So take this pattern. Um, okay, so let's run cyclic 100 and into, let's say, pattern v1. Cat pattern v1. So here is our pattern. Next thing, let's crash the application with this pattern. Okay. So gdp intro next r pattern. Let's check that out. This is the address of the instruction pointer where the overflow has happened. And these are the characters where the overflow has happened. Next thing we will do here, we will take these characters, all right, and we will use them in a Python code to just develop an exploitation code. So, let's see here. In pad what pattern in hex was the IP overflowed with? So we have this one. I have overflowed the IP with, yeah, so actually you don't need to do that. Let me now skip right ahead to the um, actual exploitation. Now let's exit. So now beforehand we know that the IP has been overwritten with J, four A's, and we know that the address of the print function is is let's make a journey to find that address where is that address i should take a note okay this is the address all right so we answered this now the last thing what is the flag let's get over the flag or let's find the flag nano exp so first let's import all the tools from the pom framework now the first thing in buffer overflow is after we have collected the information about the instruction pointer, the crash address, and the sequence of characters that have crashed the address or the IP, we have first to develop a padding or to find out the value of the padding. The padding is the space uh, or the amount of space that is needed. Uh, actually, not uh, literally the amount of space that is yeah needed to um, crash the application before you arrive to the um, 
characters which have overflowed the inst uh, instruction pointer. So if we type padding, I want to find out, we want to calculate the padding. So fortunately, the pawn tools has provided uh, a way to calculate the padding without much hassle. What you can do, you can type cyclic and then two parentheses inside them, type cyclic find. So what we will type inside here, inside that I will type j for s. Now why is that? I want to find out how much space there is before the for the the uh, g uh, j for s. Why is that? Because in order to arrive to the j for s or to arrive to that point, we have to somehow traverse the space and then arrive at for the, the j for s. So basically, you calculate the padding and then after the padding you will arrive here. Then you will replace the j for s with your code. So EIP will hold the value of our payload. Two parentheses and here we write the um, address of the print flag. So other cases you may need to write the um, actual shell code, right, in order to retrieve a reverse shell. Before doing that, make sure to do one thing. Type P32 or P64, depending on the architecture. So P32 or 64 is a tool from Pawn CTF or Pawn Tools, sorry. To just convert or make sure that the, uh, the program will not interpret this as a string. It will interpret that as a hex code. All right, so the, la the, the last thing is the payload equal padding plus EIP and then print payload. Since we want the payload, the final payload will be um, a string of characters. All right, we will use the final payload in a text file or a file and then we will input that file to the program, see what's going to happen, save, and now just execute the code and direct the output to a file called, say, pattern, v2, v3, cat pattern, okay, this is the pattern, not sure about that, but let's go ahead. Now run the program R pattern v3 Let's see Ideally we should get the flag printed out if this worked Okay, let me exit. Seems like it's stuck. Let me. Oh, okay, we got that. Let's see here. Uh, seems like there is no flag here. Okay, let's do something different. Let's feed the pattern directly into the application by executing the application and feeding the application with th that payload. So, input. Now we type uh, pattern v3 uh, didn't work again nothing is working out so let's try a different method now let me execute the payload itself and then direct or pipe that into the application directly see if this is gonna work oh it worked now so this is the flag Let's see if it's correct. I know there's no other flag, but let's see. So we'll type that in and we answered that. So that's for checksec and cyclic. Of course, we can generate patterns using Metasploit and other tools, but the methodology of exploding buffer overflow stays the same. In the next video, we will be talking about networking and shellcraft in binary exploitations. So that is for today and see you in the next video.